for time for Bikini by Everyone, come on. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have a, a, a show called Good Hang, obviously named after my penis. <laughs> not, not like it's the good hanging with your friends. It's, it's all about my dick. That's the whole show. How are you guys? How are we doing? Have you had a nice time? Thanks for coming out. Good to see you on the late show. It's a great time. Are you guys uh, you guys a Philly crowd? You guys from Philly? Woo! All right, that's that's a good response. I usually don't get that good of a response. A lot of uh, a lot of gentrifiers usually. Uh, a lot of gentrifiers are worse. People from Jersey. A lot of those. Things. <laughs> but I am a, I am a Philly boy, born and raised here from Philly. Uh, people don't usually believe me. I guess I don't give off Philly vibes. So like, if you're from Philly. How can you talk like an Italian caveman? And I will after a few beers, I do. Comes out. They're like, if you're from Philly, where's your Eagles jersey? Or your Phillies cap? Or your DUI? Where are those things? And those are at home. I don't take them everywhere I go. I don't, I don't have my DUI certificate with me, okay? I am, I am from here in Philly. Here's how you know from Philly, my move in the bedroom before I eat a girl's ass. I always yell, back door! That's the move. But he didn't laugh at that, it's a septa joke. And if, <laughs> hasn't been on septa in a while. And if you, if you take septa, you are not above eating ass because Eating ass is not the most unsanitary thing you've done, I say. <laughs> wow, you guys are great. This is fun. Yeah, like I said, I'm from here, from Philly. I was traveling for comedy, got to go to Minneapolis, and somebody asked me, and they're like, no shit, you're from Philly? Do you know my friend? And I, did, I didn't know their friend. But here's how much of like a big, small town Philly is. A week later, their friend was on the news because they were murdered. What are the odds? <laughs> Yeah. Very divisive joke. <laughs> Sometimes I tell that I just feel bad. It's not like a good. Here's, here's the real most Philly thing about me is for years I worked for Wawa. Let's talk about it. You guys like Wawa? <laughs> Wawa crowd? You just had Wawa today. That's you're probably not alone. <laughs> I worked for Wawa and on my days off I was like, I just had Wawa today. <laughs> Yeah, I worked for a while for years. I would do, I work at Wawa during the day, do comedy at night. Really just doing the comedy until the Wawa thing worked out. And uh, neither thing is what's, neither thing's working out. Yeah. I've worked, I've worked a lot of customer service. Do me a favor, clap it up if you've worked customer service. Yes, customer service crowd? Retail, service industry? Not everybody. If you're not clapping, uh, that's okay. No judgment, just, you know. Just tip, that's all, tip, it's important. But I think everybody should have to work customer service, at least for a little bit, that's valuable, right? It's valuable. You should definitely have to work customer service before you decide if like, you're a pro-life person, right? That should be a thing, that could be something. Cause like once you work customer service for a little bit, you're like, I don't know if everybody needs to be born. <laughs> I don't know if we need everybody, every person. Yeah, I worked customer service here in Philly. Tough town to work customer service. Tough town. It's weird to be talked down to by someone who's wearing Looney Tune pajamas, right? That's strange. <laughs> strange. Some crazy stories. I have a coworker who got stabbed twice. Stabbed twice. The crazy part of that story, that's not why he quit. That's the crazy part. <laughs> yeah, he got stabbed twice. What's that saying? Stab me once, shame on you. <laughs> but he, uh, he got stabbed. And then Wawa's solution was to move him to a new store. That was the solution. <laughs> Basically, do, solve it the same way that you solved the priest thing, right? Just move you over here. And just like with the priests, it happened again. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. quit that job, it's pretty cool. Um, I had a good 2022, I had, I'm in a really great relationship, let's talk about that. Yeah, 
really great relationship. Unfortunately, my girlfriend's parents do not like me, uh, but I am adopted. This has happened before, so I feel pretty confident I'll bounce back again, you know? But yeah, we, uh, last year we moved in together. That was exciting. Moving in with my girlfriend was great. Uh, it's the first time I've lived with a partner. That's cool. Also partner, her word. She makes me say that. Uh, she really likes partner because she is a queer woman and she does not want anyone to know she's dating a man. So, she makes me say that. I, I like partner though. I like partner. It's growing on me, right? It's like, makes it seem like we're trying to solve a mystery. <laughs> And, and every mystery is, why are you mad at me? <laughs> it's usually a joke I wrote that she doesn't like. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's going great. You know, the relationship was awesome. We felt good about it. I was like, you know what? This is definitely someone I could see myself with on a 12-month lease. You know, it felt so true. <laughs> After that, we'll go month to month. <laughs> and that's really how every relationship should go. <laughs> Just check in once a month. You went for another month of this? All right. Yeah, we live together. It's going awesome. Uh, we have, here's, here's the best part of living together. We have separate bedrooms. Are you guys into that? Right, it was like, okay, it was okay. Did you gasp? No. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, we're getting, we're getting great sleep. <laughs> Let me just say that. Yeah, we have separate, I love it. I'm all for separate bedrooms. I highly recommend it. It's great because we can still feel like we're kind of single in a way, you know? Go to bed in our separate bedrooms. I'll shoot her a text. What's going on? You up? You want to come over? <laughs> you know? She comes over. We have sex. Not to brag. And then after the sex, I'm like, you should, you should go. <laughs> no, I'm a gentleman. I always walk her to her door. <laughs> so, yeah, some people, some people are uptight about the separate bedrooms thing. One of my friends was like, aren't you worried she's going to cheat on you? And uh, honestly, I'm more worried about you, dude. What kind, what kind of relationship are you in where you're worried your partner's cheating on you in the next room? <laughs> Just like in the kitchen doing dishes, like, she better not be fucking somebody 10 feet away, <laughs> ten feet away from me. I'm not worried she's going to cheat on me. Also, I do comedy. I'm out every night. She wants to fuck somebody. <laughs> you guys think she's fucking somebody? Right? Uh, I don't. I don't think she is. Uh, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I feel pretty good. Also, if she was to cheat on me, she has her own bed to do that in. You know, that's fine. I don't have to change my sheets. What a relief, you know. Yeah, some people are really uptight about the separate bedrooms. One of my friends was like, what if you get married? What are you going to tell your kids? I was like, I don't know. It's got to be an easier conversation, though, than when my parents told me they were going to sleep in separate houses. You know, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably a little easier. But I'm grateful to be in my relationship. It's good, because I dated in the pandemic. Anyone else date in the pandemic? All right, I'm just me on the apps. <laughs> That explains everything. <laughs> it's tough. It is a weird time to be. It's weird to go on a date and be like, I'm going to wear my best mask. <laughs> I'm going to wear my favorite mask on this date. She's going to think it's so cute. Yeah, I remember I'm being on Tinder, and this woman, her bio said, Don't bother if you're one of those sheeple who wears a mask. I was like, Holy shit, this lady is. Definitely having unprotected sex with me. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> it's gonna rule. I don't know about COVID, but we're gonna we're gonna spread something, right? All right, okay. <laughs> when I was dating, I went home with this woman, and uh, you know we were getting like into things, and she stopped. She's like, John, I don't want to sleep with you. I was like, okay, that's fine. We stopped, and then she's like, I'm sorry. I just like I don't want to be the kind of girl who sleeps with two guys on back to back nights. And I was like, yeah, you didn't have to say any of that. <laughs> you can just not sleep with me, that's fine. And then she's like, I'm sorry, I just like, I have this date tomorrow night. And I was like, hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute. That was here first, that's not fair. You learn your red flags the more and more you date. 
I, uh, I got this lady gave me a huge red flag on a date. She told me that she thinks that watching porn is cheating. <laughs> Don't agree with that. <laughs> I was like, lady, I've already cheated on you on this date. <laughs> 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 So I took so long in the bathroom, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, man, if she feels this strongly about porn, she's definitely not gonna like when I fuck other people. <laughs> she's not gonna like that at all. You guys have been an amazing audience. Are you guys ready for your next comedian? I had such a fun time with you. Your next comic, he's responsible for this awesome show. He helps put this together regularly. He does this. He also runs awesome don't tell shows all over Philly. Keep an eye out for those. Let's hear from my very funny friend, Tyler Wolf, everybody. Yeah. 